everybody, we are back with another review, and today we are taking a look at the Nerf Blast of Ball. So, I just wanted to share this with you and show you guys this really cool toy and show you exactly what it was like to have toys in the 80s. And that's uh, kind of like what I like to do on this channel for this particular segment of the of the channel is to kind of share nostalgic vintage toys or electronics with you guys so without further ado let's hop right into the review so this is brought to you by parker brothers this is before nerf was as big as they are now where they're a standalone unit um then versus this collab type situation for them to get their name out there so the blast the ball it shows these two 80s kids just Radding out, shooting each other with foam balls. You get two blasters and you get four safe, soft balls. The shoot 'em, dodge 'em, catch 'em game. Pro project balls with 30 feet. So I haven't gotten 30 feet out of these, maybe around 20, but they say 30. That's probably the longest they've ever got. Um, so this is number 35 in the Parker Brothers series, or 235, I should say. And um, yeah, this uh, this unit I, I've kept pretty pretty pristine and uh but the only thing is we just don't have all four of the balls we only have two and the foam balls have held up really nice over time um these are still firm they're not brittle nothing like dust off these and they still get really good um suction and volume through the tube so and then we got the instructions on how to play the game basically um target practice blast the ball golf blast against the wall game um, just a lot of fun stuff to do, uh, specifically in this atmosphere with these bright colored weapons. Um, it's something that was very innocent back in the day and now um, might take a different stance in regards to this being out and about. But they did make sure that the, the Blastable Blaster is all bright colors. I mean, we got this iridescent purple color. We have the nice neon orange and then we got the teal blue handle that says the really rad nerf logo right there so pretty neat and uh so basically you'll load the ball right here so if you heard me i actually pulled this back so first thing you're going to do is load this out so that when you push forward you're going to actually use the air to pop the ball out so just like that so, um, basically what, what you're doing with these is they're, they're so soft. I mean, this really couldn't, I mean, if it hits you in the eye, it might give you a bruised eye. That'd be about the brunt of it, but you'd have to be like right up on it and this to get shot directly into your face. So, um, but again, this little gully on the end here, it'll, it holds it so that when you shoot it out, it actually gives it the veracity to shoot out. Now I'm going to shoot it into my hand. Nah, nothing. That might not even hurt your eye if it hit you in the eye. Um, but, uh, yeah. So basically, you just use this and you just kind of shoot at each other. It's the or the beginning origins of the new modern Nerf gun. A lot of the newer guns have, like, multiple clips, multiple darts, and kids probably can't even imagine using these types of um, Nerf guns to have a good time because now you have these, you know, exact accuracy uh, rifles and stuff that they have now that shoot these Nerf darts. And um, you get multiple rounds. This is like a muzzle loader, basically. I mean, you have to load one, one load at one load at a time, and then, and then fire away, and then reload. And you only have two rounds, so you have basically two each. I imagine there's four safe balls. So since I only have two, it only limits you to one round a piece, which is not that much either. So, um, but again, yeah, very similar to muzzle loader. Interesting on the evolution of that. How it started out like this, and it evolved into what there is now which is like the end strike series and the line of toys that they have um, from Nerf. So let's check out the, the back of the box, see what kind of, see what we got on the back of the box. A lot of the, so this is from 89, a lot of the um, late 80s and through the 90s toy boxes started putting art on the back of the box. Before that, board games and vintage toys just pretty much had a, a blank slate back there which is kind of peculiar so we got some we got some little action shots here we got play fast action dodge em frog em or dodge em tag em i don't know where frog em came from but we got practice target shooting so you could shoot cans with your friends and shoot the foam balls there you got compete for distance so kind of very similar to like lawn darts i imagine um and you got safe lightweight balls in there 
showing this because they're obviously close up and there's this lamp right here. So I imagine that's what they're trying to exhibit, that you could shoot these balls around your mom's lamp and not have to worry about damaging anything. So um says 30 feet. Maybe back in the day it was 30 feet when the balls were nice and fresh like that. But the now doing a test on these, I'm getting around 20 to 25 at max. But that's like an extreme, which is like I said here, you might hit 30 feet once on a good roll maybe. Um, but yeah, you're not going to hit 30 feet nowadays with the, the these balls. And to my knowledge, you can't get replacements for these because these are a specific size. You'd either have to fashion one by buying a larger size foam ball. And then again, you still might not get the density of the ball right. Because uh, if it's too... If it's too porous, the air is going to shoot through it and you're not going to get the distance that you're looking for. If it's too dense, the air is not going to have enough force to push the ball out as far as you need it to. Um, so I imagine these are in very rare supply to get these balls. Either someone would have to take apart one of these kits, lose parts, and just happen to save these balls and just happen to know to sell them. So again, yeah, very rare to find these balls. Um, but yeah, recreating these or fashion, fashioning one of these would be, I think, rather difficult unless you got the exact type of the material and the same type of ball again. Um, maybe you can contact Nerf. I'm not really sure. But yeah, this is a, this is a pretty cool one right here. So uh, if you like this review, give it a thumbs up. If you want more content like this, I try to do some kind of vintage toy or vintage electronics review on Fridays. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, subscribe and thanks and have a great rest of your day.